So it is my great pleasure to uh, host this webinar for Dokaviv this year. Uh, Dokaviv, I believe it's the 21st uh, edition, if I'm not wrong. Uh, maybe the 22nd. I, <laughs> I didn't do my homework. Uh, and we're very, very honored to uh, have the chance to see the film by Kamal Ashkar, In Your Eyes, I See My Country, uh, which I believe is the Israeli premiere uh, for this yes. film, right? Yes. And um, it is competing in a new section, which I'm also forgetting the name of, but I will find out. It's beyond... The frame the screen. beyond yeah. the screen um, and it's a cross competition um, a, a cross competition a specific competition that that uh, about uh, about the ways that people and politics connect not in the most obvious sense but in a slightly larger broader universal sense that's how I understood it um, so Kamal, we have Kamal here. We have Philippe Belaish, who is the um, DP, the cinematographer. Uh, um, and uh, Neta El Kayam and Amit Chai Cohen, the protagonist of the film, will be joining us shortly. They're doing a sound check because at 7 p.m. there will be a live concert of theirs. So we will wait patiently for them to join in the conversation. And we will start with the obvious question, Kamal, how did this journey begin? I assume knowing your work that with your previous film, but please fill us in. Yeah, thank you, uh, Rachel. It's uh, also for me a privilege to converse uh, with you and uh, with Philippe. Um, my first movie, it was about, uh, it was about also the Jews from Tinrir, from my hometown, Tinrir, Jerusalem. It was in uh, 2012. And when I finished this movie, I knew I didn't finish with these uh, topics, with this uh, subject about Jews from Morocco. I had already an idea to, to make uh, something about uh, Return to the Homeland, perhaps with my first character in uh, Tinrir, Jerusalem. But by chance, I met Neta El Kayam. Uh, in uh, in uh, 2012, I, I was in uh, I was in Jerusalem for for a screening there, and I met Neta first uh, by uh, by Facebook. You know, I saw uh, uh, someone, Natalia Aziza, uh, shared a video of Neta Al Kayam uh, singing Ya uh, Umi Del Lin Monti. When I saw this beautiful artist singing in Darija in Arabic, Moroccan Arabic. I was totally surprised because she was young, she was uh, uh, beautiful, and uh, she sings very good. And I put just a comment about, uh, I want absolutely to meet uh, this woman. And uh, Natal Natalia Aziza, immediately, uh, she, she responds, she told me, you know, her father is from Tinrir also. And in this moment, I know I will do something with her, you know. Tinrir, Jerusalem, it it's about the past and uh, in your eyes I see my country. It's about the present and about the, the future also. How we can uh, rebuild something new between us, this new generation, Jews and Muslim, through the music, through the um, Arabic also. And uh, we can see in the movie how Neta, she wants with Amit, of course, to reconnect with the American roots, she wants to make American passport and uh, she, she, she wants to reappropriate uh, her identity. So I'm just going to fill in the viewers really quickly, your previous film, because I suspect there may be a trilogy in the work here. I don't know yet. We have, we have two, right? We have a diptych, but we may have a trilogy uh, or a triptych. So um, your first film is called Tinrir Jerusalem and it's uh, basically, um, you are from Tinrir, which is a town in the Atlas, and you yes. um, suddenly realize that there's this gaping hole which has never been discussed, which is the Jews of Tinrir and where did they go and what happened to them. And you, as a Moroccan Muslim Berber, decide to go find out where is this missing part, which brings you, among other things, to Jerusalem. Amit and Neta have just joined us. And then uh, in this film, in your eyes, I see my country. You, it's almost, it's almost, but maybe not entirely, the reverse process. So, welcome, Neta and Amit. Hi. 
So I'm just reaching now the second question, and it's addressed to Kamal, but I think all of you will join in. And in your eyes, I see my country. Uh, in theory, it's a self-explanatory title, but I think that you could probably tell us more. Why is it through their eyes that you can see your country? Ah, uh, this song, it's, uh, this, uh, this title is, uh, is from the song of Fneta about her grandmother. Her grandmother was born in Tinrir. And um, I think, for me, it's an hypothesis, but I think it's, uh, it's through. When I heard Neta for the first time to, to sing in Moroccan Arabic, I see Morocco in the eyes of Neta, you know? And I think also, uh, in parallel, when Neta meet me and uh, talking about Tinrir, about Morocco, she saw also uh, Morocco in my eyes, you know? Don't say, uh, we, we have a parallel uh, story together. It's, you know, this movie it's about also uh, how we can be in between, you know? I am Moroccan, I am French, Neta and Amit, they are Israeli, but uh, they are also Moroccan, and uh, how we can manage with this plural identity. And uh, yes, it's a metaphor, this title. Did you see Mor did you see Morocco through their eyes, and did it tell of you things course, about your society? Course. Yeah, of course, of course. When I heard uh, for the first time Ya Umi or uh, the song of Salim Alali, and uh, yeah, of course, all the Moroccans. So uh, I know them. Neta and Amit they have a lot of fans in Morocco now. You know, uh, since their first concert in Sawira, and uh, for them, Neta and Amit they are Moroccan. Mm -hmm. That's it, you know? And uh, of course, they're talking much better of me in Darija and uh, of course, <laughs> totally. <laughs> so we don't want to miss you guys because they'll probably steal you back for the concert, but I'll just, I'll turn a quick question to Philippe and then we'll bring it to you. So Philippe, it would seem that through Neta and Amit's eyes, you too saw your country given that you are also of Moroccan descent. Okay. Since I'm working with Kamal, but I can say that with any director I'm working with, I'm trying to understand what is the, the genuine question that the director is dealing with. And Kamal is, is always thinking, I don't, you know, the question of Kamal is, in his first movie was, how can you continue to be from the village when you're outside the village? He was looking for all the people from Tinrir who left Tinrir 50 years ago, but still feel that they are from there. And it was the question, how can you keep, how can you keep it? And, and now and in his second movie, he was observing how the second generation of the people who left Morocco, how are they, how, what can they do to stay Moroccans? Okay, the easiest when you are a Moroccan is to be in Morocco, then you don't have any question. You keep, I don't know if it's a question of identity or of, of a tradition, but if you are in the, in the place, then there's no question. But even, but when you're out of place, how do you keep your, so say it, tradition in the, in the larger sense or your identity as Moroccans? And, of course, uh, uh, Neta and Amit are wonderful uh, uh, example of that because not only because they are trying to 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 um, to um, uh, I mean, feel their uh, their feeling of being Moroccan with substance. So they are. It, the obvious is that it's through music, but it's not only through, through music. It's also by going at the uh, encounter of Moroccans first in Israel and then uh, the, the, the Israeli Moroccans and then the Jew, Jews from, uh, from Morocco in Israel and then in Morocco itself and feel themselves from Morocco. So of course for me, and I understood that it's interesting Kamal because Kamal doesn't want to be only a Moroccan in Morocco. In Morocco, he want to be a Moroccan all over the world. He want to be, he want to be able to be in France or in 
somewhere in the world and still be a Moroccan. And of course, that's for me, who's who I with also with a, a, a I mean, I don't want to say origins. I want to say with a Moroccan mother and a, and then a Moroccan family. Of course, I can learn. I learned a lot by observing, but not only by observing, but also by being in Morocco. Okay, it was also mm -hmm. for me um, a way to see in their in their the eyes of Amit and Neta and in the gaze of Kamal on Amit and Neta. It was a way for me also to understand what is special with Morocco, to, to feel it. I mean not to understand it's not intellectual, but to feel it, to feel it, to feel how different it is. So I would I would say as as a as as the the what do I see? I see in the film that, that Amita Neta's journey is not a nostalgic one and it's only ostensibly looking at the past, but it's actually very much about what can run through their veins and define their lives in the present. And in many senses, ultimately, will probably define their Israeliness more than, you know, how they, how they be also Moroccan will define their Israeliness maybe even more than their Moroccanness. And it's your turn, Neta and Amit talking about you and you're actually here in the room with us tell us where your encounter with Kamal found you in the sense in Hebrew because you were already on your own journey and your own trajectory but his journey and your journey came together for a period of a few years tell us about it um, first of all I'm I'm an artist uh, since I remember myself I was looking in the mirror and asking myself question about the way I look, uh, um, the color of my skin, you know, basic questions that you, you ask yourself when you, when you want to, to uh, paint your self-portrait in the beginning, like in the <laughs> beginning of the art school. And, and then I found myself like dealing with, with, with my, uh, my uh, physical, uh, um, appearance and uh, and I digged also into uh, the family photos and I looked for uh, photos of women that looks like me from the past and of course I also uh, <laughs> uh, painted my my grandmother a lot and I went to the to her street and I found all those uh, women in Abu Hatsira street in Etivot uh, the first uh, uh, you know uh, immigrants uh, that uh, uh, are still, I mean, some of them are still alive and I knew all their names uh, because I was really, really close to my grandmother from Tinrir. And I think through the art uh, and through the, um, um, the search maybe of, of, of telling something, of, of, um, of describing a, a, I don't know my 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 position in the world. Um, you know they tagged me a lot in the art scene. Uh, you are a woman. You're Mizrahi. you and I and I was asking myself, what does it mean? I mean, wh when people came to my first exhibition, so the curator was talking about how I'm coming from the periphery area of of Israel, and then I asked myself, I mean, do am I really? Peripheral person, maybe, maybe it's not the way I want to live. Maybe it's something that was forced on on my uh, art or or my uh, existence. And I think uh, my life changed after the first trip to Morocco. Um, not in a way that you said exactly. You described it really well. I didn't feel nostalgic. I, maybe I went there because I was nostalgic and I wanted answers for a lot of questions of where I'm coming from, why do I look like the way I look. And when I came there, I found a lot of other answers to other questions that I didn't even ask myself. And it changed me. I, I came back and I relocated myself in Jerusalem. I started learning Arabic. I started digging in... in uh, Moroccan art, Moroccan music. Uh, I looked for uh, 
uh, persons, like uh, artists, uh, creators that were like me, uh, Jews, but living in between, uh, celebrating their whole identity, singing in, uh, in Arabic, in French, uh, having different names, uh, the same person, like different, uh, uh, like the ability to aim everybody and to be universal. And really, it, it knocked me out. Like I, fe I felt all those years, I, you know, they're been lying to me. And now I have so many things and so many, uh, like I have also deep, 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 deep uh, uh, roots uh, in, in another geographical area, but also in, in, in another spiritual uh, world of art, of music, of beauty, of... Uh, you know, Mor Morocco f is full of art and uh, uh, you see it uh, living in the street. So it, it gave me a lot of inspiration. And at that point, maybe two years after, I meet Kamal, which is, the, I feel it's like a mirror of myself in, in, um, in, in another district, district in uh, France. Uh, and we talked a lot uh, with his father, actually, about... Um, the, the, the reason that uh, you know, his father left Morocco, my father, and you know, I remember Philippe all, all the time he was saying like, wow, Kamal, you're so rich. You, you're, you're able to, to go back to your village. I mean, you can be a city, a city man in the, in the middle of the world in Paris, and then you have your village and you are able to, you know, to go to swim in the river and to make hammam and still enjoy all, all the, the good stuff that, you know, uh, you have in the village, uh, being close to the nature, things that we are like in, in the big city. And, and yes, and his father was very, very, um, you know, surprising and very smart. And he said, you know, for me as, a, as a, I mean, I'm in, I'm, I'm in the same age of your father and I am asking myself, why, why are you, uh, not able to have your own village and why your journey was a one-way ticket and we had a lot of deep deep uh, uh, conversations about uh, this uh, topic and that's it I mean you can see it in the film and you can maybe uh, uh, understand between the, the lines that uh, the journey that we went uh, through there was also you know a journey to, to to not only find ourselves, like those are questions that people are asking all around the world. Uh, people, you know, that immigrated from A to, to B, and uh, it's it's universal questions. And the question of identity is not the only thing that you you are gaining from Kamal's uh, film. I think I, I think we're in the same uh, point on the timeline that uh, we ask the same questions all around the world. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, it's clear that in the film, there's a lot of connection. It's clear from Kamal's words and your words that the, you find a lot of parallels in each other. And nevertheless, there are some diverging uh, aspects to your narratives, to your positions as minorities, majorities, in, in, and each of you has different, ver you know, several layers of being both part of a majority and part of, a, of various minorities. Where did you find disconnects and how did you handle them? It's for me? Oh, no, it's for Neta? For whoever wants to take it. To be my yes, daughter, to be my Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe I, can, I can answer. Okay. Um, yes, you know, being Jew in other country, like to feel minority, it's a, it's a different than what we, we, we feel here in Israel first. And to be able to move, to be able to uh, be as uh, the other, but feel secure and feel, uh, feel uh, like uh, you can, you know, walk freely, you know, and, uh, and uh, talk freely with people, tell people, you know, uh, where you come from. It's, it's a completely uh, changing your uh, mind about, what others, what others uh, feel, feel, feel here, you know, in, in Israel, like, when you are the majority. Uh, but I think Morocco, Morocco is, a, is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an example, it's a good example for Jews, 
או מרוק אנד ג'ורס, הספייר שלי, to feel how it should, how it should be, maybe, how it should be. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not uh, 100%, of course, it's not, uh, every, not everything is positive, but the way as a minority to be, to be able to, to live there uh, uh, in, a good, uh, in a good way, it's, it's, it's op it opens your, your, uh, your eyes. About your, uh, the, the previous question you said, you asked, For me, you know, when you, when you grew up in, in, the, in, in the Tivot, where we, where, where we were born, it's very clear what you are, what you are. You're Moroccan. If you ask someone, what are you? He say, you would say Moroccan, Tunisian, you know. It's, it's very clear, it's obvious, okay? But the way the Moroccanness is, uh, is uh, here is like, is like feeling like in a, you are in a kind of a cube, like it's a kind of niche. If you have a community or synagogue, blah, 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 like a few songs, okay, it's a very, uh, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's very narrow, exactly. The Israeliness actually is one of the past, you know, so it, 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 uh, it, it, it uh, only a few things remain. But when you go to Morocco and through the eyes of Kamal, I think, I, feel, I, I felt, and I think Neta also, uh, we felt, uh, You felt uh, more, uh, of course, universal, but more free also. More free to be whatever you want. Because it's all about, you know, it's not about being Moroccan. I mean, fuck it, you know, you can be whatever you want. Be Moroccan, be American. But the, the, the idea is to be free. To be free, to choose, to choose your own way, to choose your own identity, to choose your own uh, whatever. Just choose, you know, the, to be able to choose. Uh, and, and this is something that uh, not many people in the world can do. And I think uh, not many people, uh, of course, in our area can do. Uh, of course, Palestinians, but I'm talking also about Mizrahim, you know, your, your identity and your, your, uh, uh, your life is really like a structure in the minute you, 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 you was born. And this is the idea, to break this thinking, you know, of what people think about you and to start, choose. what uh, you want to ask to yourself, to your son, to your family. Okay, and this is, I think, the, the, when, I, when I see myself in Kamal's uh, film, I see a, a, a person which is, which is a bit uh, more like free from, from the past. So, so it's interesting because I, I think that Kamal, for you, your encounter with Amit and Neta, Is, a, is very much about how you want to define, again, you, not the path, if Tinrir Jerusalem is in a way is looking for what, you know, sort of what, what got lost in the past, because you were obviously born after this exodus, through Amit and Netza's return, you're looking for the Morocco that you want today, and they represent for you the option of Morocco being more pluralistic and more, more multifaceted. Not being an alien, you know. <laughs> When you go there, you, you, you suddenly, you don't, you don't feel, uh, uh, um, you know, the, maybe, I don't know, the root. Estrangement. Yeah, that you feel sometimes here. L'étrangeté. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Also, by exactly. the way, being Amazir in the, in the film of Kamal. I think we lost you. Yeah. Amit, I think we lost Amit and Neta, so in the interest of the people in the webinar, until they can tune back in, I'll let you go ahead, Kamal, and, and, and if you can address sort of this, this was yeah. my impression, observing you, just, uh, you know, uh, um, full disclosure, Philippe well, Lynch is my partner in my good work, so. Talking I, about, why do you speak Arabic? It's not your language. It's not your language. No, speak Arabic. Uh, people would say that to you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. This also, one. you know, there are people that are like natives, um, Africans, the Amazigh, and they, my grandmother, for example, she, she used to speak Shilha. That yeah. was her yeah. first language. Right. And right. then she needed, when she went to the big city from Shfalo, she went to Tinril to marry my grandfather, and then she needed to change the dialect to Arabic. And when she came also to Israel, she didn't have any choice because they mixed everybody from Fez, Rabat, and Tinriel. And they, and they were a little bit also ashamed to speak Shilha. So, uh, so she erased uh, uh, the, the language, the African language. And uh, now, I mean, when I want to reconnect my roots, I have one option. 
I don't, I never heard her uh, speak in Shafran. And for Kamal, it's different because he was growing without Arabic, the opposite on <laughs> He has the Shafran and the French. Yeah. So together we are all the... So, so maybe, maybe after all, it's a journey from being a, a majority here to being minority there, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, re re return to the diaspora as a as an as an epistemology mm. that uh, that has positive aspects and not ne necessarily negative aspects. Knowing what it's like to be a yeah. minority and all of the all of the For, humanism that comes with that potential. Rat <laughs> yeah, your Rachel, sorry, um, your question is very interesting because uh, for me, I never feel. I am a minority, you know. When I remember when I was a child, uh, I was born in Tinrir, in my village, in the whole the Kasbah, and I grew up in French, in the modernity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And every summer we will, we, we went to Tinrir for the for the holiday to visit uh, my family. And I remember always the question uh, from my family here in Tinrir. Uh, for them, I I was French, you know. And when I was in, uh, in, uh, in, in France, uh, I was a Moroccan for uh, French okay. people. And I feel something strange. Je sais pas comment, how do you say, étrangeté. And I, I, I found myself through this Jewish absence. Because for me, this part of Moroccan identity was strange for me also, you know. And I feel empathy with this part of identity and I found really myself as a Moroccan, as a, as a Berber also, because, okay, it was a fact for me, but I realized what is to be Berber uh, after with the, when I met uh, some uh, activists here, uh, some intellectuals fighting for the rights of uh, Amazigh language, etc., etc. And until now, from now, I have always also this uh, distance with uh, my Moroccan, uh, I can see myself from the outside, uh, also for the, my French identity, because I dream in French, I feel really French in my mind, and also with my Moroccan identity. Philippe, anything to add? We're, we're, we're short on time. Um, we're gonna need to wrap up soon. Um, you know, I really you want to thank Kamal and uh, to thank uh, Philippe and all the crew that uh, uh, worked uh, on this uh, piece. For us, it's really, really uh, exciting to see this journey and to experience uh, it, uh, also the screenings. Because when we went to Marrakesh to the, to the premiere of the film, uh, we were completely in shock by the reaction of the audience in uh, Morocco. <laughs> it was really nice and, uh, you know, we learn, every time we learn more. Uh, only when we thought, uh, okay, that there is nothing to learn more about uh, Morocco and uh, we found another thing, like, like a surprising uh, event that happens and uh, shows us uh, different things about the way um, we're different and the way uh, that something that I say that is completely natural to me can be uh, translated into a big laugh <laughs> in the audience. And the opposite sometimes tears. And I think it's like, you know, uh, a piece that uh, you can say that we, could, we are all living inside it. Kamal, me, Philippe, Amit, every, everybody that participated in this film. Like, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the editor, yeah, yeah. sharing a lens. <laughs> whose father is Moroccan and coming from Tizgi, completely coincidentally, uh, with roots in the same uh, village as your yeah, well, yeah, yeah maternal oh, grandfather, so right? Yeah, and amazing, so all yeah. these connections, yeah. And, and so, of course, me and Philippe are half Five cases of Moroccan. <laughs> What'd you say? They're hiding the Tunisians. No, that I said that, of course, me and Philippe are half Tunisians. Yeah, so there's a nice. little bit of a Tunisian. No, not African, after all. Infiltration <laughs> in this screen, yeah. Philippe, anything to say? Yeah, I can just say that um, I think looking at Meta and Amit, 
should um, um, you know uh, inspire many of the Moroccans Jews the, in Israel or all over the world to understand that they will only benefit by going back to Morocco and feel the place. I, when I was hearing a Neta and Amit speaking about being majority, minority, and Kamal, etc., I, I, so I'm French, I won't say that I'm not, but I felt completely uh, my belonging to a minority in France. And when I'm in Israel, of course, I'm on, uh, since I'm Jewish, I'm in the, the privileged side of the, of, the, of the two sides. So of course, I'm feeling with more power than maybe than I, than I, that, that, that my French self uh, had. But when I was in, when I am in Morocco and I've been traveling several times so far, thanks to, uh, I mean, going always to film with Kamal, but I, I determined for, for it to be different. But when I'm there, even though I'm a minority, the, it's a different minority than being um, in France because the, the uh, estrangement is not there. The Moroccans are, seeing in my eyes so much of their country that then what they're giving to me, what, I mean, what they're saying to me is that I'm Moroccan, even though I have, a, I have a problem to feel Moroccan like they are, because I'm not Moroccan like they are. But when they see their country in my eyes, it's clear, just like no French people see France in my eyes. This is, <laughs> so, this is important to say, and I will say that, you know, in, in, as much as possible, I mean, go back. And it's not about being um, nostalgic or melancholy or anything, just about encountering a uh, history, which is, uh, I mean, which we're, we, we're still living in. So I just realized that because uh, the way I, I understand English, I understood the title differently. It wasn't in your eyes when I look into your eyes, it was through your eyes, I see my country. And that was my line of questioning earlier. I think that it's nice that in English that there's the two meanings. Uh, voila. I think it's, a, it's, an, it's something that also uh, we learned from Kamal's film, uh, the subtext, I mean, the message at the, in, in the end that we are not really, I mean, looking home uh, geographically. People are searching for love, searching for being not a stranger, like Philip described right now. Philip, uh, um, like people really could use this film also to just uh, um, see how we can be, uh, uh, you know, connecting through people. Uh, when, when, when a human being treats you nicely, when, when he sees through uh, your color of skin or maybe your, uh, I don't know, the, 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 mm -hmm. the uh, stereotypical, uh, uh, you know, stereotypes. So then, then you can earn, earn a lot. Uh, and finally, when, when the, the title, In Your Eyes I See My Country, that gives power to the people more than the, 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 the land or any geographical yeah. area. Yeah. The people are important yeah. at the end. Yeah. I think this is Kamal's message. No, and I, and I think if anybody who didn't catch the film and see this webinar first, obviously you must see the film, but you, you see something. I mean, when I see Neta and Amit through Kamal's eyes slash Philippe's eyes and Yael's, all of, all of them sort of, you know, treating your experience yeah um it's 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 just uh, it's just beautiful and it's an encounter where you can experience something um about self and other and difference and without you feel that it's devoid of hierarchies you feel that it's devoid of it's not a colonial it's an exploration it's an expedition and it's not colonial 
uh, and it's clean of that and it's, and it's, and it's just beautiful. So it's, it feels like a gift to be an observer of that journey. And that's probably a good place to, <laughs> to leave off. Mm -hmm. someone wants Thank to you. Ask. See you at seven. Yes, yeah, see you at the concert. Thank you. Good concert. Bye. I will see you Bye. now. Bye. 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 Bye.